Hi everybody, Jamie again, your damn reporter. I'm here with Ron and we're gonna do today's Ask Ron. D.L. Lieberman, who doesn't list where he's from, asks, if an attorney closes the deal, where does using a realtor come into play? What exactly do they do for you? And how would they be compensated for the service they provide? Wow. Well, it depends on what kind of deal we're doing. Is it Dale? A DL. DL, okay. Because um, if I'm buying a bank owned property from a bank, the realtor obviously has got it listed, so I'm buying it through them. And when I close it, they really don't do anything but get the bank to get paperwork to the closing, and they're done. If I'm buying a for sale by owner, I don't usually use realtors unless they're short sales. If they're short sales, of course, the realtor's got to bring me the seller, get the contract signed by the seller, and then we have to jointly figure out who's going to do the short sale after that. Uh, an attorney will close that for me as well, but there's nothing for the realtor to do except put the attorney in touch with the, the bank. So um, I think that answered that question. I, um, I know that when I'm doing lease options, realtors don't get involved. However, we're doing one right now on an axe deal where a realtor brought us the buyer. We're getting a $10,000 assignment fee and the realtor's getting $2,500 of it and we're getting the rest, but the realtor brought in the tenant buyer. So um, occasionally you'll have those kind of deals as well. So I hope that answers your question, DL. If it didn't, make it a little bit more clarified and I'll try it again. All right? That's the only question we had this week? That's it for this week. Well, guys, hey, get your questions in here. Just because it's December, we don't shut down, so get your questions in here. We'll get them out to you next week. We're still trucking along. Hi everybody, Jamie again, your damn reporter, and we're doing this week's Planet Run. So, Ron, what have you been up to this week? You're a busy guy, you're hardly ever around, so. Well, um, restaurants consuming a lot of my time this week, and I hope you're posting the videos. I mm -hmm. did one with it all gutted out, did you put that one I up? I sure did. Okay. You guys better watch that. Yeah. Um, we're, gonna get, we're getting bids in this week to try to get some contractors in there so we can start making it look pretty again. I'm waiting to consolidate all of that to get for sure what this thing is going to cost me. You guys are going to be part of the whole renovation. Yesterday I spent all day with uh, Dean Killingbeck, which is a Dan Kennedy long-term student. Um, Dan has been successful in sucking as much money out of Dean as he has <laughs> me, I think. And Dean is a professional uh, restaurant owner, marketer. In fact, if you guys, if you happen to have a restaurant and you don't have the book called Full, F-U-L-L, -L, you should get it by Dean Killingbeck because it's the best book I've ever seen on restaurant marketing. And um, we sat here in this room all day yesterday, we went through a whole marketing campaign. He's going to build out my whole campaign for me for the next year. Uh, it's actually another good example of letting other people do what they do best and getting out of the way so you can focus on what you do best. I'm perfectly capable of doing everything that Dean is going to do for me, but I don't want to. <laughs> I'd much rather have him focusing on it. That way I'll know we're doing everything we can to get our seats full and keep them full all the time. It's a good lesson for any business, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in fact, um, Dean is going to actually do all my mail campaigns for me and write all the pieces and the whole works because this is what he does for other restaurants. And I'm fully aware and he's fully aware that I'm going to pay him probably 25 to 40 percent more than I could have a local printer do the same thing. But I'm, I don't care because the reality of it is if Dean isn't doing it because it's his job, he's focused on it. Then it ain't gonna get done, and I gotta get somebody in charge of it, and we gotta watch it, and the whole thing. The, the extra 40% that he'll charge me is way less than it'll cost me to have those seats not full where they could have been with Dean on the job. I, I, I hope you got that message. So um, that's what I spent a lot of my time this week on. We're still doing a lot of work with Global. In fact, I'm getting ready to sit down and create a whole new course for beginners for Global. Um, you can look, on, look out for that. And by the way, next week now, we have, we have an Axe webinar, it's not Axe, it's a Control Without Ownership webinar coming up, so be on the lookout for that email. I'm going to do that with uh, Jay Connor, and you have a chance to get on that, and I'll show you where we're making uh, money in Axe. In fact, today, while I'm recording this, uh, Scott Ulmer and I went into two homes today and got two Axe deals accepted with two visits, uh, pre-screened before we got there. People just glad to work with us, and if you don't know what Axe means, that means that we lease option their house for what's owed on it, which is a little more than what they're worth, and we'll assign that lease to a tenant buyer, and they're fully aware of what we're going to do, and both of them were thrilled that we came into their house. So very, very simple deals to do. So I'm actually doing real estate here today 
while I'm doing Global's business, while I'm working with restaurant marketing and, and um, all the other <laughs> things that I've simultaneously got doing. He's a busy guy. Busy guy.